We're live here from the red carpet at the Canadian Screen Awards. My name is Samir Morani. I am your host. We're going to be chatting up all the actors, getting in deep on some of these questions. So let's just jump right in. You're at this point in your career when you can look back and go back in time, give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, just keep working hard and just never compromise and never let anyone bring your confidence down because people, so many people try to, you know, whether directly or indirectly, try to squish your dreams and your passion but just to be you know, unapologet unapologetic about what I love to do. And on the nights when you thought none of this is gonna work, you're, you're hitting a wall, there's just, you're not feeling confident, how did you work through that? Well, there were a lot of those nights. And how I worked through it is just going back to what I love. And you know, whether it be a, a play that I'm reading or a film that I love to watch or just finding inspiration from other artists, you know, whether it be in the form of interviews or anything, just. I, you know, I just try to s keep myself connected to the things that I truly love, which, you know, it started with my love of plays and theater and acting. So whenever I feel my confidence wavering, I just, I just go back to that. And, and it's a nice reminder that all this other stuff, you know, all the rejections and all the you know, challenges that come with this career, it's, it's not as important as the reason why I did this. And it's, I am still doing it to begin with, it's, I love it. Is this what inspires you to keep going? Absolutely. I do it because I love it, not because anybody tells me I'm good or bad or I'm allowed to. And no one will ever get in the way of me doing what I love day to day. Amazing. So obviously, brotherhood, masculinity is a central three theme in your movie. How do you define masculinity today? I, honestly, I, I don't think there is one definition. I think masculinity is whatever you believe it to be. And I think what we need to do is find ourselves in a space where we are uh, open and inclusive enough to understand that. You know, masculinity has no one definition. It's whatever you uh, deem it to be. And hopefully you deem it to be operating from a place of love and however that manifests itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I could have said it any better, you know, really just coming from a place of, of love and I think just authenticity, you know, I think masculinity, that phrase has kind of been, it's, it's, it's kind of looked at as something that is super like tough and, you know, these things, but also there's, a, there's feminine energy in masculinity as well, right? So I think ultimately it's like what Aaron said, you know, um, it's just about, you know, navigating yourself and uh, as long as there's love that is rooted in that, then, you know, um, Who's to say what is and what isn't? Uh, I'm loved and I'm here for a purpose. And, uh, and that's what gets me through the dark times. There's a lot of artists who don't really have that kind of perspective. Do you know what I mean? Um, I joke and I say that when, uh, when I have a hard day at work, I come home and my wife goes, I go, babe, oh, it didn't work. The, the wardrobe wasn't right today, blah, blah, blah. She goes, yeah, the baby needs a diaper change. <laughs> or, or the cat threw up in the other room. And I go, that's life. That's what matters. That's what it's all about. Do you know what I mean? I get to play dress up for a living, man. Do you know what I mean? I get to I get to to play for a living. And although it's important, although we can we can improve people's lives, although we can give them some hope, um, there are bigger and more important things out there in the world. So I can't get caught up in that. You know what I mean? I'm blessed that I've been given an opportunity. And I'm just grateful for every moment that I get to do it. Absolutely. So if you can go back in time and tell your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? Don't sell yourself short. Be, be a person of integrity, right? And don't accept something that is less than what you're capable of doing. You know, just because an agent says you should do it, just because a casting director says you're not capable of doing it, just because uh, those opportunities aren't presenting themselves to you, don't capitulate, man. You know, stay true to yourself. Because one day, what's for you will be for you. I love that. Sound advice. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You got Thank it. You. All the best. But there were times where I'm sure you felt like this might not work out. Oh, yeah. How would you deal with those? Dude, I am still dealing with those. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it, it is, this industry is so finicky and so crazy and nothing is for sure ever that 
I always feel like I'm never going to work again in my in-between times. So what I've been doing lately is I've been writing. And I'm, I'm now writing. I got to uh, write and produce and star in my first movie last year. And I've just been asked to write another one for the same network for this year. So I'm... I was on the plane here on my first draft, my laptop on my first draft, and that that is the thing that keeps me creatively alive while I'm waiting for the next acting gig and the next opportunity to jump on set and be in front of a camera. I'm doing all that behind the scenes stuff, and that is, it's, it's bringing me a lot of joy. It keeps me grounded. So, knowing all of that, if you could go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give yourself? I love that question, and I want to flip it, because at this point in my life, there's so many other voices of like, um, you know, notoriety and fancy people doing fancier things than you and, you know, am I doing enough? Am I climbing enough? Am I making enough? You know, all that stuff. When I was young, when I was like 16, 17, into my early 20s, it was all about the art. It was all about the storytelling. It was like, just put me in front of an audience. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's three people. I want to tell this story. I want to move that person, right? And nothing else mattered. And, and I have a journal from my first professional show. I did, and I was just looking through it the other day. And the, and the like journal entries that I have there are so pure. They're just so alive and vibrant, and none of the bullshit of, of the business crept in, right? So I would actually have my younger self tell my older self, all that bullshit still doesn't matter. You know, get back to the art. Get back to the, I want to change that person's life. So I love that. That's how I'd answer that one. That's incredible. So how do you stay inspired and motivated? You're doing all these extra things to try and keep yourself busy, but sometimes you might go, oh, like, I'm just not feeling it. How do you keep yourself going? Um, therapy, um, yoga, hot yoga, breathing. And I, it's all of those things are the things that kind of keep me emotionally centered and stable. Um, but it's also my family. It's like diving into my kids' world and being and recognizing that all this stuff is part of my life, but it's not my whole life. And actually, they're whole human beings that I'm here to shape and mold and support and help grow. And like, that's that's a really creative endeavor right there to be like on that journey of growth with my kids. So I, I find that, and and then the other thing about like little kids is that they're so wide-eyed and in wonder about everything in the world, every single thing. And so when you get a chance to like see the world through their eyes, it makes all that other stuff go away. So yeah, that's what I focus on. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank you, you too. You're at this point in your career, you've gotten here, you're walking the red carpet, you're doing all these things, and it all feels fantastic. But there were times in your career where it didn't feel so great, right. where you wondered whether this was even gonna work out at all. Right. Talk me through that. That's funny. My mother, who was an amazing force of nature and has since you know, passed on, she used to say when I was a kid, a couple of things. One, someone's got to get the job, might as well be you. And also, and it sounds weird, but she, I know how she meant this, like, like any job that an idiot can do, you can do, because you're not an idiot, implied. But so the idea of like, like, there's no reason if I'm doing the work and working hard that I can't, I can't get the work, have the work, keep doing the work. And even when the times were sort of quiet, I just believe that it's like it's okay if there's a lull, but if I keep alive and don't waste time being bitter, angry, and complaining, you know, like 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 find the light and keep working towards whatever I want to become. I'd keep going, and then I always did. Something always came up, and so I'm a bit of a manifester. I tend to believe. You know. So how do you keep yourself motivated then going forward? Um, I keep busy, really. You know, like when people stop and and waste time complaining about not working. It's like, well, the time you spend complaining, why don't you do more work? Work, work on a script or go to an acting class or talk with some friends or, or start a group or make your own project, you know? So I've always created something new if I was in the middle of something else or look towards something else that I could keep it alive, you know? It's, it's a muscle, you lose it. it. It becomes flabby if you don't, you, you know, if you don't actually sort of do something with it, it kind of gets quiet. Yeah. How important is it to have the right group of people around you? That is everything. My, it, <laughs> Like you talk about, you know, your friends, people that you, you, you keep as friends, that's the energy that you that you allow to be near you. And if there's something that feels lax or unloving or ungenerous or defeatist, it's gonna it's gonna enter your psyche. So I think if you keep people around you who are positive and active and, and alive and curious, 
like actually curious about the world, other people, about the work, then it, it keeps you in a world that keeps wanting to draw you into moving forward. Because I think that's, that's an energy that moves people forward in, in their own lives and in, 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 in their careers. One last question. You can go back in time, talk to your younger self. What would you say? Put down the ice cream? <laughs> no, you know, honestly, um, um, know that you have a right to be there. Because as, a, as a, a young actor of color, I didn't see myself in a lot of places where I was going. And I didn't know I would be allowed there, so I didn't know how to dream about that early. And so it was later on when all of a sudden I ended up in places where I didn't know I could end up. And I was like, oh, wow. And it kind of screwed me up for a while. Like, like some weird things, like eating disorders and some other things, because of the pressure of that, not understanding that I have a right to be there. And I feel like I would have just said, it's okay, whatever happens to you is supposed to happen. Take it in stride, you are worthy of that, you have earned that, and it's okay that you're here. That would have taken up a lot of years. Amazing, thank you so much for the honesty. It was great to meet you. Thank you, have a great night. You too. Love your show, by the way. Thank you, oh, you know about it. A lot of my friends have done it. Russell Peters and a few people, so big, big show, I dig Amazing. it. Amazing. I dig it. Hey, so then you know what we're gonna ask you. You know the kind of questions we're gonna go for. It's all good, got nothing to ask. There's days where it's not working up here. You're, 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 you're negative, you're, you're not confident, you're not sure it's all gonna work out. You feel like, you know what, maybe my best days are behind me. How do you talk yourself through those moments? Uh, real talk, and I'm not even making this up for the cameras, uh, one of my mantras in life is just practice happy every day. Every day I practice happy, I set my intention, and I truly believe it's not the speed, it's the direction. You know what I mean? Most people get caught up and I think I need to be here by this time. No, man, as long as the, the, the forward, it's forward motion, that's all you need. And that's what keeps me going, you know? And I, I don't judge myself by anybody else's standards other than my own. I'm already living the dream. This is all I've ever wanted to do since I was 12 years old. So, I'm, and I'm still doing it. So, no matter what happens. So, speaking of 12-year-old John Paul, if you can go back in time and talk to him, what would you say to him? Uh, get braces sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your teeth sooner. But shout out to Donald Glover, by the way. <laughs> I love your albums, Childish. <laughs> how, do you, how do you stay motivated going forward? I know you said you try to block out the noise, but sometimes it, it seeps through and you got to find a way to get the engine going again. Owning all of it, you know? Uh, everyone thinks life is supposed to be perfect all the time, and it's not, and it can't, you know what I mean? Life is to be, you, you got to experience life, and in experiencing life, it's all of it. It's the highs, the lows, the mids, the sad, the happy, the mad, and at some point realizing that all that goes into making you, you, once you process it, you know? And uh, like I said, I set intentions, and I'm insanely filled with gratitude for everything that I that happens and doesn't happen to me you know so that's what it is thank you so much buddy thank you very much man there's times in your career where you thought maybe this isn't working for me and that could lead you into some dark places makes you wonder whether you're in the right place whether you're doing the right thing we're getting real, we got it. We're getting real. that's what Jen's talk is about how did you work through those moments um you know, I, there were, I quit for four years once. The thing that kept leading me back was my love for what I do. This is and all this stuff is fun, but ultimately, um, just pretending you're different people to be an actor is the, just the most um, intoxicating, horrible, beautiful, wonderful thing in the world. I think I had a lot of help from my parents who kept telling me that um, it was my duty, that I finally found something that I loved. It was my duty to go back to it. I think both of them didn't have that. They didn't have parents that encouraged them to pursue their love, so they really put that into me. So ultimately, it was the love of the business, but also guilt from my parents saying that because they couldn't do it, that I had to do it for them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How important is it to have that circle of people that you can rely on and talk to, especially when you're not feeling like your best self? I think it's crucial. Unless you have a circle or at least one other person that can sort of lift you up when you're down, it's almost impossible to do it. We're only so strong, and if you have a community, however large or small, you have a community that you trust that can build you up, it's, um, it, it's undoubtedly the most important thing. We're, we're communal people, especially artists, and, and we need one another. It's what we feed off of. It's the stories that we tell are about one another. And so um, I, I think it's crucial, especially to younger artists or people starting out. I think the thing, the thing that I would always say to them is, whatever you can do is find a solid community and then just stick with it. Speaking of younger artists, if you can go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, yeah. what would it be? I, um, to uh, ask for help more. Uh, I, instead of being so proud or um, 
ha wanting to project this idea of perfection and the fact that I can do it by myself, ask for help all of the time. And usually when you ask for help, nine times out of 10, people say yes. I don't think I ever anticipated that. So ask, ask, ask for help, ask. Thank you so much for your time. You look incredible. And it is a journey. You're not always gonna be, you know, it's like life, right? You have highs and your, and your lows. You can always be at the high. You have to experience the low because then when you have the high again, then you have something to celebrate and look forward to. So I'd say ride the waves. You know, and I, I literally am telling myself that right now because, you know, I don't know if you heard, but they just canceled my show, child. So it's like I'm riding the wave. And it's like I'm trusting the universe that the next great thing will come along and I'll, and I'll be ready for it. So I'm learning to, in the moments of calm or quietness, to be quiet, to be just that. And quiet. when you are sitting with yourself, yeah. what, are you, what are you saying to yourself? How are you staying motivated? Prepare me. Get me prepared. So in this time where I'm maybe not working or I don't have a heavy schedule, prepare me for that next opportunity. So that's, the, that's what you do in the meantime. You prepare for the next. And if you can go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, yeah. what would that be? Don't forget to have fun. You know, don't forget. Always have fun when you're doing it. Because, I mean, you're in this business, you know, sometimes it can be kind of crazy. And folks can look at you crazy, talk to you crazy, act crazy. So you just have to remind yourself, have fun. Because you might choke somebody. <laughs> like right now, like turn the AC on before I choke somebody. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful you too, you too. You're looking sharp. You're probably feeling great. But there's times in your career where you may not have felt so great, where you didn't think that you looked your best. You didn't feel like you were your best, most confident self. Oh, my God. How did you talk yourself through those? I think I'm doing it right now. This is not what I do. Like, I, I, I like playing characters and playing make-believe. This is the hard part. Anytime I have to speak as myself. So I think I'm talking myself through it right now. I, yeah, there's so much self-doubt in, in uh, our careers, and, and I think... Um, I think there's like an expectation that as performers we also like know how to be humans on stage uh, as ourselves and uh, I find that really challenging. Yeah. And how do you keep yourself motivated going forward day after day, especially when the self-doubt creeps in? I think just finding a sense of like playfulness and, and uh, remembering why I started which was just like the fun of it and yeah it's like playing make-believe. So if you could go back to your younger self and give yourself a piece of advice, what would that look like? You know what, honestly, I want advice from my younger self. Sometimes I feel like my younger self was more confident than I am now. I feel like as, as you get older, sometimes you like lose some of that. Like, I'm trying to go back to that, I think. How's that process going? It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that you're able to tap back into that? Yeah, I think, I think there's moments where I'm like, oh yeah, this, is, this reminds me of like, the fun of doing improv as a, as a teenager and like discovering that and, and why that was important. There's those little glimmers where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, it can be like that again. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're an award recipient this evening. Earl Grey Award. That's right. For, uh, for what, a whole lifetime of work? Exactly, a whole lifetime of work. <laughs> right. But during that entire lifetime, as much as there were ups, there were downs. A lot of also a lot of laterals. Sometimes you didn't feel like this was any any of this was going to work. Absolutely. Sometimes you wonder why what you're doing, why you're there. So how did you talk yourself through all those? It's a continuing process. So you're you know, still doing it. Never it. stops. Still doing it. And Absolutely. What do you tell yourself? I just think about being. I try and do a grateful list in the morning. I think about things I'm grateful for. And one of the things is I've been relatively successful in the business, and um, and that's enough. You know, it's um, something I chose, I thought I would do. I was told perhaps it, should, it wasn't for me when I first started, but I'm very tenacious, so, and uh, it's worked out quite well. If you can go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would that advice be? It's probably, uh, like you were saying, uh, about confidence and about following your heart, following your gut, and doing what you, what you want to do. You do what you like doing until you're as good or better than anyone else, and you can make a living at it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And positive energy, and even then sometimes you're going to have down days. It's just, 
It's human nature. How do you get through it? I would say talk about it. Talk about it with friends and family because they're the ones who can sort of help you see yourself through their eyes and I always find that helps. If you can go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would that be? Find a better work-life balance. <laughs> That's an important one. A lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, one. exactly. But I think that that would have been wise. But anyway, I've had an amazing life and uh, it continues. How about that? <laughs> How do you stay motivated then as it continues? Oh my goodness, I'm doing a lot of work for Journalists for Human Rights, which is, means so much to me. I've just returned from a trip from Africa, trying to highlight um, women's rights, human rights, places where it is not so obvious. And it all is a reminder of how fortunate we are in this country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to Pleasure meet you. To meet you. You guys are looking sharp. Yeah, yeah. Look, not a, listen, not as sharp, not as sharp as you. Yeah, I'm trying. Not as sharp as you. I saw the way you dressed both of you at the Junos. I'm like, I gotta step it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Junos Spain showed up in the double breasted with I no know. shirt. I know. That was fun. I know. Same color as this right Same here. Color. You know what I'm saying? Same color as that. Listen, I don't got it for you because I have like, they call them the 12 disciples of hair right here. So my 12 <laughs> disciples would have been like all over oh, national TV. So floating and everything. couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it. All right, listen, I'm just going to keep it simple for you guys. Yep. You can go back, give your younger self one piece of advice. What would it be? Mm. I'd say it's okay to question and doubt yourself. It's okay to have moments where you don't know what you're doing. Because I had a lot of those moments and you feel like it's the end of the world, nah, that's just part of the process. Have you had a recent moment like that? All the time, because I write on the show. Mm. And so sometimes you work through an idea, you break an idea, and you're like, oh, this idea is not going to work. Mm. But it's okay. And now I've learned it's okay. Take a break, you have dinner with the family, you know, you watch a movie with the kids, and you come back and you keep going at it. Okay. Yeah. Me, I would just say to um, let go of all fear much earlier. Like now, it's whatever. I'm down to try anything, you know what I'm saying? Like as long as it's something that I'm passionate about. But I think when I was younger, I was so ugh, so hesitant because I was so worried about what other people may say or what my fans may think. And that's funny, like dating myself, but that's even before social media. So imagine like some of the angst and the anxiety that a lot of these um, actors and musicians have now, knowing that every single thing that they do or say is going to be seen like by the world forever you know what i'm saying so i would really say to myself like let go like have the most amount of fun that you can um and i i just think it'll like lead to a more fulfilling life yeah gentlemen thank you so much it's good to see you both. always good to thank see you, you my good friend you guys. all right have a good one bro. That's a wrap here from the Canadian Screen Awards. We got a chance to talk to some of the actors here on the red carpet. Got to get up close and personal with them. It was great to get some insight into the way they think and feel about some of these important topics. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, do all the works. We really appreciate it and stay tuned for more.